We're here in Brooklyn, home of Welcome Back Cotter, Curly Mustaches, and what you might not know, home of craft distillation. Yes, that's right. Brooklyn's becoming known as a hotbed of spirits being made right here. And we're going to check it out today. We're rolling up on the New York distillery and their bar, The Shanty. We're going to meet with Alan Katz, who's producing a style of gin here that you really just don't see a lot of anymore. The other unique thing is the shanty is the bar that's connected to the distillery. So the spirits they make on one side, we get to drink on the other side. Hey, Alan. Hey, Andy. Great Good to see you. you. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. So uh, we're going to get into making some gin today. We certainly are. A little navy strength gin. Navy strength gin. Why don't That's you right. tell us a little bit more about what that means? Well, it goes back, of course, to the British roots of gin. And once upon a time when their entire fleet was powered by sail only, uh, and wonderfully, generously, the officers were paid with alcohol, they needed a high enough proof gin, a gin of enough strength that if by accident or otherwise it was spilled on gunpowder, you can, in fact, still fire off the guns and the cannons. And you know what they say, it's always good to fire your cannons after drinking a whole bunch of gin. Now, to break this down to its most simple form, when we're distilling, we're basically taking alcohol and boiling it. That's correct. And because it boils at a, at a lower temperature than water does, when the steam comes out, you can separate the water and the alcohol, and that's how you get where you want it. That's exactly right. And for gin, very simply, we're flavoring that alcohol. So we start with neutral grain spirit. It's really just as it sounds. It's spirit made from grain, in most cases wheat or corn, sometimes sugar beets, that is as neutral as it can be. And the idea is that you're starting with a blank canvas. Ours comes in at uh, 190 uh, proof which is 95% alcohol. 95% alcohol, exactly. It's a lot of alcohol. It is. These are your botanicals. These, these are most of the botanicals. In Perry's Tot, we use 10 botanicals. All gin, as you know, by law, must include juniper. And we're big fans of juniper. When people think of gin, in quotes, whether they like it or they don't, Juniper is really what they think of. It's Certainly. that piney, you know, I mean, you, you squeeze these, you get the resin. And I mean, you these can are, do that. And the yeah. fun thing about botanicals is they're certainly edible, and you absolutely and immediately get that ginny quality as you're describing it. In citrus, we have lemon peel, we have orange peel. We use a little bit of grapefruit peel as well. For me, after juniper, though, the most vital botanical is actually coriander seed. It's the bridge between your citrus flavors and your spice flavors. You can take a little cinnamon and smell just how potent that is. You could taste it too. Yeah, it's powerful. And like a all the flavor is there. Cardamom, wow, what a great flavor. Let's cook with it here. Cardamom ice cream. All of these dried, beautiful flavors go into the that's gin. That's right. And that's, that's what comes out the other side. We definitely seem to be getting something out of here. Are we ready to rock and roll? Well, this is the hearts of the matter. This okay. is what we're going to keep and ultimately turn into the finished Perry's Todd. Once we've collected the gin in the rolling tank, we'll use filtered water to bring it to bottling proof. We'll bottle it, and then it's ready to go out to our customers and into our bar. Maybe we should go have a drink. This is the final product. Thing of beauty, for sure. It starts with an idea in your head. Then they, you're making it here, producing it, bottling it, and then we bring it next door and people get to have a drink with it. That is, you know, that's start to finish. Humbly, I agree. You ready to try? I am ready to try. Okay, we're gonna start, start with something that's as simple as can be, yet fun and complex, and that's a gin and tonic. People say, oh, that's too easy, that's too simple. But the truth is, is that a little bit can go a long way. And so for us, a gin and tonic, or as we call it, a tot and tonic, we only use an ounce and a half of Perry's Tot. Because, as you'll see, the flavor will still stand out in the finished drink. I think that's the point that a lot of consumers sometimes miss on overproof spirits. It's not that it's extra alcohol just for the right. sake of having extra alcohol. It's an opportunity to drive more flavor. Let's taste this, baby. Ah, oh, man. That is delicious. First of all, 
gin and tonic was my first, like a lot of us, my first favorite drink. Um, and what I love about the drink in general is is all the botanicals that we that you, you know that you source to get into the spirit, give it that flavor, and it really comes through. I love it. Thanks, it's man. Amazing. Uh, looking forward to coming back and just just having one or two in a much more mellow fashion. Uh, wait, hang on. This is happening again. All right. Well, I see that it's drinking time again for you guys, which is awesome. Uh, don't forget to click below to subscribe, and that way you can see everything that we're doing as we go behind the drink. We'll see you next time. Two comedians enter, one comedian leaves, with his dignity intact. Find out who nearly loses his lunch. Ever wondered what French people eat when they go camping? Eat one and you'll want some more. You see, what you do is you take the pudding, you put the bacon and the pibbly peanut brittly on it. This Blaze Burger takes everything awesome from New Orleans cuisine and fries it all up together. Welcome back to the Burger Lab. Subscribe for more free tasted treats.